The problem of glyphosate resistant summer grasses is becoming one of the most pressing issues that growers currently face. Australia currently has three species of summer grass confirmed as glyphosate resistant. Liverseed grass, windmill grass and ornless barnyard grass. Recently there's been a survey conducted just on barnyard grass and it showed that out of approximately 80 samples collected randomly across the region, 60% of those were glyphosate resistant. In the sample, which covered Dolby to Tamworth, resistance was found from Gundawindi to Narrabri. Since the first case of barnyard grass resistance was discovered in 2007, there's been a steady increase. The thought of glyphosate losing its effectiveness is a scary prospect for growers. Once they have glyphosate resistance, they can no longer use this product that they've relied on for many years. And glyphosate's such an effective product, it's cheap, it's safe and it's convenient. It's so essential to weed control that there's a national body whose focus is to prolong the herbicide's working life. Glyphosate is our most important herbicide. If you actually look at where it's used around the farm, it's used in many, many places. If we lose glyphosate for important weeds, it's going to greatly increase the cost of weed management. It's the very usefulness of glyphosate that may be leading to its downfall. Because of its cost effectiveness and convenience, there's a danger growers can rely on it too much, particularly for summer fallow control. We've now reached a stage where glyphosate has been relied on for enough years that that pressure on the weed species um, has reached the point where there's a lot of resistance out there. Um, the other reason I guess there's been an increase is we've moved away from conventional tillage systems now to zero till systems. So we're placing a lot heavier reliance on our herbicides in general. We're also seeing changes to how and when weeds grow. The emergence patterns of the summer grasses have changed slightly over the last 10 or 15 years. Um, and it's changed a lot for a lot of our weed species. For example, barnyard grass was once considered a summer weed species. Now we're finding it emerge early in spring and later into autumn as well. So it presents a whole new range of scenarios where we're trying to manage this weed. Michael's working on new strategies to manage summer weeds, including those with glyphosate resistance. We're gaining more information on their emergence patterns, on their seed banks, and on even the speed of growth and seed production. So we're finding out a lot more about the ecology of these weed species. The other thing that we're doing is we're defining and developing tactics for the control of these weed species and packaging them so farmers are able to apply them in combination to achieve the best control they can and to reduce seed production on these weeds. One of the most useful tactics is double knock. We've seen that the double knock is extremely effective on um, pre-tillering or early tillering summer grasses. So this includes um, both windmill grass and barnyard grass, but also the troublesome weed Feathertop Roads grass. Michael hopes to define when the most effective time is to apply a double knock and what interval works best between knocks. The timing of the double knock is critical. A delay of even just one week can reduce your control dramatically. Uh, if you do happen to delay your um, first or second knock, we have found that increasing the rate of herbicide for both of the knocks does improve your control. And when ground cover reported on windmill grass last summer, double knock at the seedling stage was recommended as the most effective control. Glyphosate does a, a, an okay job on seedlings, but what we've find, been finding is that a, a double knock strategy where you've got a glyphosate mixture first and you're following that up with a biperidol will give you better control of those seedlings. If you find glyphosate isn't working as well on your property as it has in the past, does this mean you have resistant weeds? I guess when you consider herbicide resistance, it's pretty cut and dried. So a species that you once were able to control with a certain herbicide such as glyphosate, you now are not able to control it with that weed. However, there are other environmental constraints that will impact on the efficacy of your herbicides. For example, if you have a stressed weed, uh, the herbicide isn't going to be as, as effective. It's important though, if you're finding that you have poor control of a weed with a herbicide, you need to confirm that through testing. And there are several testing facilities available that can do that for you. And what action can you take if you do find glyphosate resistance? 
There are a number of different herbicide options available, but with any weed species, the sooner you can get onto the problem, the better. So if you have small, unstressed weeds, uh, you're going to get improved control with most herbicides. When Ground Cover spoke with weed researcher Jeff Worth in 2011, the advice he gave then on glyphosate resistance in barnyard grass still supports the current thinking on rotating chemical use for all summer grasses. If there's an opportunity to use another herbicide group or even a residual herbicide or something, do that. So not concentrate on one thing but just try and be more proactive rather than reactive. For glyphosate effectiveness to continue, growers need to adopt an integrated approach, finding problems early and acting fast to nip them in the bud. Weed management in general relies on diligence. Um, this is especially the case when it comes to glyphosate resistance. Um, it's important to identify problems um, as soon as they become a problem in your paddock, so monitoring is critical. Um, if you don't currently have a glyphosate resistance problem on your property, now is the time to start using alternative tactics. So use different herbicide mode of actions. Um, use non-chemical approaches as well. So prevention will ensure that you're able to use glyphosate into the future. If you don't prevent, you will lose this herbicide.